I've always heard about solitary confinement, seen it in movies, but you know, still, it's, it's nothing like reality. It's about over a meter and a half by 80 centimeters wide, so it's, it's like a grave. Problem is that they lock you in it for so long and you start to speak to yourself slowly. You start to think, okay, you know, no one's answering me. You start to bang on the door, maybe someone will hear me. You have a bucket that you go to the toilet in and then they take it out the next day in the morning. So for you to stay in that smell 24 seven, for you not to get any air or for you to not see anybody, that's violation to human basic rights, you know? So until this day, I'm shocked that it still goes on around the world. Can you tell us how you are feeling at this moment? <laughs> you know, that moment was the moment that I always waited for for four years. Can we let him through? He's my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought of that beautiful day, how it's going to be when people are just there welcoming me home, and that always got me through. It was very emotional for me, and it was very exciting, but I was always sad that, you know, I'm lucky to have this, but there's still people behind, behind bars that need help. For four years, I was moved from prison to prison in Egypt. I was tortured, I was beaten. People were being killed, people were, were dying in prisons from lack of medication and lack of health. I didn't know when I was going to be released, when I was going to be home, if I'm going to make it alive, if I'm going to die. Why is this happening? I couldn't understand as a 17 year old why another human was tor torturing another human. I was just out of my Leaving Cert exams here in Dublin and I went to visit my extended family in Egypt. Of course I was, I was a normal teenager, you know, I was just out of exams, I just wanted to have fun and Egypt was, has a lot of, a lot of nice beaches. But um, a few days later the politics in Egypt started to, to rise, there was political conflict that happened between a lot of parties. So and then a coup took place, there was a lot of people killed, a lot of people arrested and a lot of people disappeared. Uh, of those people that were killed were two of my fr close friends that I was actually hanging around with. So later on I, I protested in the streets, peacefully protested in the streets. When we were arrested, we were arrested in a mosque. So as a 17 year old, I always thought, I always compared everything to Ireland. So when the officer said to me that he only wants to investigate me for five minutes and check if I have any criminal record or if I have anything illegal against me, so I was like, okay, that's normal, and you know, it's your right as an officer to do. And later, that four, five, that five, uh, five minutes turned into re I entered my fifth year in prison. So I always like to compare it, you know, each minute with each year. There's a lot of people that have committed suicide in prison, and it always crossed my mind: why shouldn't I just do it? When Amnesty International proved me as a prisoner of conscience, for me it was very important because they were like, okay, we know you're innocent and what's happening to you is not right. I was like, okay, there is people out there that actually believe I'm innocent. It just made me still believe in myself. Once I got about 300 birthday cards, that was very essential in prison because it did give me a push of hope every time. I just wanted, first of all, to say thank you to Amnesty for helping me and that I'm home today because of, of the pressure that happened with Amnesty. I'm here today after four years and it's actually insane to actually think that I'm standing here because I just never thought it would happen. And I just thanking you a thousand times, a billion times, for the rest of my life wouldn't be enough because you all gained my freedom. Now I have a voice that I have to use and I have to use it for, for the good cause. Amnesty International, you heard of Amnesty International before? Hey. I'm here today to tell the people of Ireland and the people outside of Ireland, any human basically who can answer a human call, that there's a lot of thousand people who, are still, who still need help around the world. You have two minutes. And today, 
we have Amnesty International on the street, like you said. Hope you're enjoying the day. Thank you very much.